Shoemaker principal at Middleton High School, and this is starting my fifth year here. Um, it is starting, I'm going to share my age a little bit, um, a 35th uh, year in public education. So, I love kids, I love freshmen, I love being in this school. I, um, it's why I never leave, and um, I'm just really, really thrilled to be here and to welcome you and to welcome your uh, children here. Um, know that I deeply believe that um, parents and families are their very best first educators and that um, we want you as our partner as we journey through the next four years together, um, which will go really, really quickly. So we understand that you may be feeling all kinds of things. Perhaps it's that time in the summer where you're like, could school start tomorrow? Or you're lingering on to the very last days um, um, with your student, with your children before they return or come to the high school. Um, we know that you could feel anxious. Um, we, this is a big high school. It's the biggest high school in the state of Wisconsin and your kiddos will be able to share with you how big it is. So if you've had a chance to actually walk the schedule, you'll notice it's a really big high school. But we've done some intentional things to make it feel smaller um, and some things that are really, really working well. So just to get a sense um, in who's in the room, um, if you are a Middleton High School graduate, would you please stand? <laughs> Welcome. I suspect the school looks dramatically different than when you were here. Um, so if this is your very last child, you will be empty nesters next year. Will you please stand? <laughs> so, in four years, in four years, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is your last child to go through. Thank you. And then, would you please stand if this is your first child that's going through Middleton High School? Those that are your first timers, you have some of our veteran uh, families that you can lean on and uh, talk to about their ch other children's experience. Um, either way, we feel there literally is nothing that we can't help you with uh, when it comes to school. We are used to all kinds of kids, all kinds of families, all kinds of situations. Um, and I have an amazing team who you are going to meet this evening. So um, before I do that, I wanted to show you this really flattering. This is um, last year uh, during um, our very first day with freshmen. It is a blast of a day. Um, because what happens is we have our link crew members who are 11th and 12th graders, and I'll share a little bit more about that later. But they come in and we just do all kinds of fun and crazy things together. Uh, and we, um, we also, kids get to meet their teachers, they get to spend quite a bit of time with their advisor, and it's only freshmen on that day. So it, really is a great opportunity um, to get some of the kinks out um, for, for your kids. So um, here's our program tonight. Um, it's probably going to last about maybe 30 to 35 minutes. And then we will all be available at the end just to answer any questions or if you want to come and introduce yourselves. Um, we will talk about what kinds of support do we have for our kids. What kinds of support do we have for our families? How does the high school work? Like, what's, what's all the things? 
Um, and um, unfortunately, we weren't able to hear from students tonight, but if you were here in January, we did have our students here. And then we'll talk about kind of what some of our goals are for this year. So the first person I want to introduce is Jill Gertner. And Jill has been in our district a 29 years. Um, Jill is also the principal of Clark Street Community School that has their own campus um, in our secondary school facility. And, um, you know, if you are interested potentially in Clark Street, um, feel free to reach out to Jill and she can explain uh, that. We also have Ms. Carmen Classy. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> Carmen has been with us um, for, she's up <coughs> her fifth year with us as associate principal. And she'll speak with you a little bit later about what departments she serves. Um, Ms. Liz Merrick. And uh, <laughs> this is Liz's fourth year with us. And um, so um, tickled that um, we're all kind of back together, including Mr. Bobby Reinhardt, his fifth year. <laughs> third year, Mr. Ray Rosen. So that's our principal team. Um, each of us has a role. My role is really kind of overall vision for the school um, and um, in, in terms of programming and um, initiatives and that kind of thing. And each of the principals will speak with you about their role. So let's take it away, our principals. <clears throat> Students, and that's what we want to provide for them. 
our Capella Student Support Center is located on the second floor south, um, so kind of above the south main office area. And if you have a student in that uh, support center, we look forward to working with you. All right, we saved the best for last year. Hi, everyone. I'm Carmen Passi, and I work um, with the Phoenix Support Center along with English, Fine Arts, World Language, and our bilingual resource team. So the name Phoenix um, is a, comes from a small constellation in the southern sky and named after the mythical bird with positive meanings across many different cultures. It represents resilience, rebirth, strength, renewal, and eternity. And these are lifelong attributes that we hope to um, instill in our students here um, as they leave NHS. Um, so Phoenix is located on second floor north, just um, on top of the north set of social stairs. Uh, we are so excited to meet you. Um, one thing that you learn about me is I love corny jokes and one-liners, so please stop by and tell me your best ones, school appropriate of course. And so um, I have one for you all. Um, what type of jacket does a phoenix wear? A blazer. <laughs> and we're going to get you to the right place. Um, you can call them, you can email the counselor, you can have your student email the counselor. Any way to get a hold of one of them, that's where you're going to go when you all have that moment of, I'm not sure what to do. Um, that's where you're going to reach out to that student support center and we will find the resources that you need and, and kind of work through that. You're also probably going to have an experience over the next four years where the student comes home and says, this teacher, I don't understand what's going on, or I don't think the teacher likes me, or I miss this class so much I feel really behind. Um, those are gonna be experiences where you could just reach out to the Student Support Center and they can help you through it. Um, we're always gonna encourage you to have your student contact the teacher. Um, you can do that by saying, why don't you drop by their class during ASR that we'll talk about later. Um, why don't you email them? If your student's not in a place that you feel like they can do that, you can do that and say, I'm emailing about my student, I have a question about this. We always kind of ask the parents to copy the student on the email. It just kind of makes the adults feel like we're, we're all kind of in this together and helping shepherd a student through when appropriate. There might be times you need to tell adults things that you don't want to um, copy your student on. You know your child best. Um, you know what is the right move there. Um, but just know that we have tons of ways to be supportive. You just have to reach out. Um, so anytime you need to let us know, if you're emailing a teacher or a counselor and no one's getting back to you, maybe something's going wrong, maybe that teacher is on leave for some reason, you can always reach out to one of us. Um, our names and emails are on the website, you can call us, and we can kind of dig a little deeper. Um, but just don't sit there and wonder or worry too much. Let us know what's going on and we'll try and help you get you to the right spot. And there's tons of people here to help you. We are a really big school, but we are resource rich, um, and we make it as small as possible for you. All right, <clears throat> All right. Um, I want to introduce to you uh, our Dean of Students. Um, we're kind of um, <laughs> A little bit fruit basket upset here in the sense that um, you'll see Miss um, Jordan Kula, who is in the upper right hand corner. She had a baby yesterday. And so I know a little baby girl named Remy. So we're so tickled for her. Um, and so um, uh, Jen Zart will be her replacement. So, um, Mr. Antonio Hoy is the Dean of Students of our Phoenix Center, right here, welcome to you. Ms. <laughs> Amy Scherniker is the Dean of Students of Capella. Uh, I don't 
Ms. Zark wasn't able to be with us this evening, but she's eager to get started on her job. And um, Mr. Johnson kind of helps, works with all of the deans, um, but we call him Dean of, our, of Systems. So, Mr. Johnson. Now, um, if you went to Glacier or to Cromery, you might be familiar with the job of the Dean of Students, but um, bear with me. I just want to kind of share what their role is. Really, um, their primary role is to remove barriers for learning through relationships. So relationships are absolutely, absolutely key in the work that we do, whether it's a teacher or a paraprofessional, relationships is the core. And so their job is through relationships to remove any barriers um, to learning. And that means working with students on issues that might be getting in the way. It could be a behavioral issue. It could be um, not showing up to school, um, being um, regularly tardy, those kinds of issues that come up that are preventing um, our students from learning. And so that's the role of our Dean of Students, and I'm going to turn it over to them right now. Hi, I'm Amy Schoeniger, and I work with Capella. I would like to, first of all, touch base upon the historic restorative approach that we use here at Middleton High School. Um, our main goal is that all students feel like they belong, and we have students feel like they are belonging with being a valued member of our community. Um, again, focusing on relationship building, as Ms. Schumacher touched upon. Um, and with this, goal, with this goal at the center of our work, we spent the last three years reworking the code of conduct to better reflect our restorative practices with students. Um, we are working to hold students to high expectations and working with them to learn and change behaviors versus doing something to them to try to change behaviors. Um, we provide additional support to help students understand the greater impact of their choices, a way to help them make better choices in the future and the community beyond the four years that they're here with us. What we want all students to walk away with here is understanding that while we hold you to high expectations here at Middleton High School, we will help guide you and support you over the next four years. You are not on your own. Your student support center is always available to you. We want you to end your years here at Middleton High School feeling prepared and ready for your post high school plans. We want to support you every step of the way and we're here to work with you. in a week, they'll spend the day in an alternative learning environment with a supervised um, staff member so that student services, support staff, teachers, administrators, we can all check in and kind of problem solve around the students' needs, figure out what the student needs in order to be successful in meeting the class. Um, we have hall passes, making sure students are communicating that they're supposed to be on class at certain times, help our campus support and ensure safety in our building, that we know where every student is at all times, um, help us identify students that are in need of additional interventions, we want to make sure that students know they should be in class and that being in class is where they're going to be most successful. Um, we have, um, if a student chooses to continue to be out of the classroom, we have in the past had um, the SRO write tickets for loitering, but we're going to do everything we can to proactively encourage students to attend class as much as possible. Hopefully that the code of conduct 
keeps you in bounds and keeps you in a, in, a, in a place to where you can navigate our school, navigate your school, navigate our system, and, and follow the code of conduct to where you stay within that code of conduct, it will allow us to make sure that you are successful here at Middleton High School. One of the things that we do know that happens is sometimes our students make choices that don't end up being the choice we want them to make. So what we get a chance to do with the code of conduct is to use that to help the student hopefully make a different choice the next time uh, they're met with that um, decision to be made. And we work with them, like we said before, like that's our goal, um, to, is to continue to help build students up from this year to by the time you all graduate, you walk out of here productive citizens and being able to say like, hey, this is what my school did with me, this is what my school did uh, for me, and said this is what my school did for me. And so, I'm gonna leave it right there for the Code of Conduct because our goal is to hope, our goal hopefully is that you don't have to um, actually have those conversations with us, but we know sometimes things happen, but we're gonna be here to kind of help you through those um, times and um, help you as students kind of grow, and parents, guardians, and caretakers, we're always here to kind of, to help you Make sure uh, we're doing the best we can to help you and your family out again. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brad Crandall. Uh, I wear a few different hats in the school. Um, I'm the assistant athletic director and student activities coordinator, but I also get to work with Mr. Johnson here, and we um, are coordinating our school safety efforts. We spend a lot of time together going over maps and drills and things like that because our number one goal um, for every adult in this building is to make sure we make a place um, that is safe to learn, safe to socialize, safe to be, essentially a, a place to belong for your student. That's our goal. We want them walking through the doors in the morning feeling like they know they're okay here. And our staff take that very seriously. We're really lucky to have, I mean, we have a huge staff. We have a lot of teachers, a lot of paraprofessionals custodial staff, you name it. And they all have that same goal, which is awesome. Um, a couple things we do um, to make sure that our teachers are on board with everything that's changed um, in this beautiful building is we do hold trainings. It'll start next week with our new staff and um, the week after with our returning. And then we also do refreshers every semester. The first two days of your classes, students, you will get a safety uh, lesson directed directly to the classroom you are in. So it's not this general, like, if the fire alarm goes off, we leave. It's like, no, we're in the PAC, and if the fire alarm goes off, what do we do? We put a lot of onus on our students to come up with creative solutions and think ahead. These are high schoolers, and they are awesome. They also have a lot of opinions, so we want them to be heard, and the teachers have all worked hard to be able to kind of use that feedback and bring it to us, and we come up with the best ideas that fulfill our safety. Um, we do do monthly drills. Um, we, we advertise them to the kids. They're posted in every classroom. Drills are not supposed to be a surprise. Um, we want the students to be calm. We want them to know they're coming. We want them to know what to do so if the real thing does happen, fire drill, tornado drill, what have you, they're ready. If we're always going to shock them, they're never going to be ready. We don't want that kind of attitude here. Uh, new this year, or returning this year, is students will have to have their ID on them at all times if they want to get into the building. Um, this is a major safety thing for us. We need to know that the students entering our building are Middleton High School students or Clark Street students. Those are the only students allowed here on a daily basis. And you'd be amazed. We have a big building. We've said that a lot. There are a lot of doors. So we want students to enter the main entrances with their IDs so we can know that there are students. Um, we also are lucky with the remodel and the expansion. We have a ton of cameras in this building that help keep us safe. It helps us tra monitor traffic flow in certain hallways, which doors should be open or locked at certain times of the day. Um, we're very lucky, I think, what's the count? 200 and some odd cameras in the building. Um, we just added four new ones at the new athletic facility, and we're working on new ones at the uh, um, parking lot and athletic facility beyond that. Um, and I think the biggest tool to give you tonight is our partnership with our outside programming. We work hand in hand with MPD, um, Dane County Sheriff's, the Fire Department, EMS. We have a great working relationship with them along with partnering with our school resource officer. Um, we all work together to make sure your students stay safe every single day. And one of those partnerships has led us working with the Department of Justice and their Stay Safe 
uh, I'm sorry, we went back a couple years, Speak Up and Speak Out platform. We just got notification today that this has been funded for another year. This is a tip line where students or parents or community members can go onto our website, click the link, and submit a tip of something that they may not feel good about. Hey, I was in the hallway today and I overheard a kid say this. Hey, one of my friends posted this on TikTok and I'm really worried. It can be used for many things. It could be, hey, they park like idiots in our parking lot when we talk to them. We get those ones a lot. Um, <laughs> But this is a great thing. You can leave your name, or you can do it anonymously. And you're going to be talking to a real person that's not a school staff member. They have a staff that responds to all this, determines where it needs to go. Does it need to go to the police? Does it need to go to um, the school? Does it need to go to the district level? And they contact us based on what they're getting reported to. It's a fantastic system. It, we can't speak highly enough about it for school safety. It has helped us do a lot of things. I will say this, if you don't leave your name, there's no way we can follow up. And one of the things we pride ourselves on as an administrative team, as a student services team, um, as a school, is we will always follow up. But if we don't have a name, we feel awful because we'd like to find the students that are seeing this issue and say, this is what we're doing. Keep a lookout, let us know. But if we don't have names, we can't do that. So please encourage your students. We would never share the name out. Um, none of our staff would. It's, it's meant to be that safe space for them. But if they want that follow-up, we need to have a name, and obviously we will do our best and to keep that private. So uh, we'll both be on the hall afterwards if you have any school safety questions. We don't want to bore you too much tonight, but we're here to help. If you ever need anything, reach out. Uh, we're so happy to have your students here at Middleton High School in Clark Street. We're excited to start the year. And one thing I also should have mentioned before is que también soy una persona que habla español para la gente que lo necesita. So, yeah. <coughs> All right. Um, so first, attendance. Uh, Mr. Johnson talked a little bit about this, but attendance is really the number one indicator of student success. Obviously, because students are here and um, learning and, and getting what they need, um, and we can help them out. So, um, if your child is absent, there are a couple of ways you can call into the attendance line that matches their student support center. Um, and you can also go and do it online through Infinite Campus the day of. Um, if it's after 4 p.m. on the day that they are absent, then it will have to go um, through the call system to the support center. Uh, drop off and pick up. The building does not open before 8 a.m. So as the weather gets colder and whatnot, please keep that in mind. Otherwise, students are um, staying outside in the cold, but 8 a.m. Is, is the time. The north entrance, which is up here, is for buses <coughs> and for um, special education drop off and pick up. So if you park out there, we're going to ask you to move. Um, you'll be in the way for the buses, so please um, drop off on the south end if you are someone who is dropping your um, child off yourselves. Um, let's see. Oh, and midday appointments, south entrance would also be where you would pick up your student because they would report um, to the main office. If they are going to do that, they need to stop at their student support center in advance of the appointment, uh, in advance of the time they need to leave, so they can get a pass to get to their teacher um, and get out, uh, out of the building on time. So preferably in the morning before the day starts, um, they can do that and be ready to go. We operate on a every other day um, A, B block schedule. Um, the first freshman day will be a little bit different because we'll go through the entire one through seven blocks. But after that, starting September 5th, we'll start on an A day. So on an A day, you'll have the blocks one, two, three, and four with advisory and lunch. And then the next day is a B day, and you'll have fifth, sixth, lunch advisory, and seventh, and then ASR, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So that rotates every other day, A, B, all year long. We have a snow day, we just skip that day. Um, and then keep going with that A rotation. Classes are about 87 minutes. Um, and then the passing time is enough time. Please don't dawdle in the hallway. That won't give you enough time, okay? Um, so we encourage you to move quickly. It is enough time if you are on task and, and going from class to class. At the end of every B day, we have something called All School Resource. And we abbreviated ASR 
and it's two different 45 minute periods where students uh, can sign up to, to see whatever teacher they want to see. All the staff in the building is available for them. We use a program called Flexi Sketch, um, where students will use their advisory time to sign up in there and let's say, today I want to see my math teacher and my science teacher, I can do that. And then something changes for me and the next day I want to see my English teacher and my social studies teacher, I can do that. Um, it's a really great time to study, to get extra help, to be in, a, in a, an environment where other students are also wanting some extra help, extra study time, to work together. Um, one thing that we find is as the year goes on, students will try to convince their families that this is not required anymore. <laughs> That's not true. And even in February, when they're like, they don't require this anymore. Nope, still required. So don't let them fool you. And start using it wisely right away. It's a great resource for all students uh, to get the help that they need. Passes. So Mr. Johnson talked a little bit about passes, but we have three different types of passes. So our bathroom pass, every classroom has one. It's like the blue or the orange. Different parts of the building have different colors uh, because if you're leaving one of those classrooms and have that color pass, that's the area you're supposed to be in. So if you have a green pass from the third floor north and you're over here on the first floor south, we'll know you're in the wrong location. Um, so a bathroom pass is the one you take, go to the bathroom and come back. The second type of pass is a destination pass. So maybe I am going to see my counselor for the last 10 minutes of the, of the class period. My teacher will write me a pass and I'll take that pass with me. That's, I'm not returning to that classroom. Um, and then the third type is the one I talked about before is that midday appointment pass that you'll pick up from a student center if you plan to leave the building at that time. Bye. All right, so earlier we got to talk about um, our student support centers. And that was one way that we take this big building and big school and make it feel smaller. Um, our advisory program is another way that we try to do that. Um, so our advisory program, um, each student, so your freshman, will come and start and they'll be assigned an advisor for their four years um, at the high school. Um, they will meet every day, like Ms. Classy said, even um, no matter whether it's an A day or a B day. Um, and we will meet with their advisors, typically between 15 and 20 kids per advisory. Um, and the goal is really to create a small community within a large system. Um, the advisory program goals, um, number one is to support students as they establish and maintain positive interpersonal relationships with staff and peers. Um, so the hope is that by having this small community um, on their daily schedule, um, that they'll have a staff member that they can start to build a strong relationship with right away. Um, and they'll have peers as well that they may not know starting the school year, um, but very quickly they get to know each other um, and, and help each other, mentor each other as they go through their freshman year together. Um, the second goal is instill an atmosphere that fosters intellectual, academic, and social-emotional growth. Um, we do a lot of different things during advisory. Um, something new this year is we're gonna have a theme for each day of the week. Um, and some of those activities that you might see in advisory might center around mindfulness, um, might center around academic and career planning. Um, we may have days that we just have fun and we play games and competitions or compete with other advisories. Um, and there's always plenty of food during advisory. So fun and food, um, along with um, more serious conversations where issues may come up um, and it's a good opportunity for an advisory to circle up and have that conversation about something that might be happening within the school or something that might be happening um, in one of the advisory members' personal life. And they want to have a conversation with the people that they're close to. Um, the third goal of advisory is to provide students with opportunities to establish workable goals that will positively impact their high school experience um, and post-secondary life. So I mentioned the academic and career planning. We'll do some work around thinking about the future, um, setting some attainable goals right away, um, but then also looking forward to what next school year might look like, or what junior and senior year might look like, and then start to dabble in what might life after high school look like. So again, just to distinguish between advisory and ASR, um, because a lot of times they get mixed up, especially with our freshmen as they just start out. So advisory meets every day um, with that group of 15 to 20 students with one advisor. Um, like ASR, advisory is required. Um, it's another one that we commonly hear um, 
the rumors saying that, no, I don't have to go to advisory, it's not important, I don't need to be there. Um, in fact, they do earn uh, 0.25 credits throughout their high school career as part of their graduation requirement. Um, so we don't want students to be surprised and get to a point in a year where they haven't been attending advisory um, and end up don't, not passing advisory and then they aren't, aren't able to participate in clubs or activities um, or athletics. So we want to make sure that, that students know that up front. Um, there are some privileges that seniors have um, with advisory, but we can talk about those um, as, as the freshmen get older. Um, again, with ASR, um, ASR meets on B-Days. It's a great resource for students to connect with teachers that they might need a little bit of extra assistance in um, their classes. Um, and the biggest thing for students is getting signed up for ASR. Um, there are some ASRs that are quite popular that fill up pretty quickly, um, especially when exams may be coming up or um, a, a big project might be coming due. Um, so making sure that they take time during the advisor to sign up for ASR. One unique thing that we have here is called Link Group. Um, it's another way that we really try to support, especially our freshmen, um, as they go through their first experience at Middleton High School or at Clark Street. Um, so you'll, your freshmen will notice right away on the first day of school for them on August 31st, um, when we have our ninth grade only orientation, uh, we'll have all of our link leaders here um, that will be working closely with our freshmen. And each advisory has two or three junior or senior students who are our link leaders that are connected to those advisories for the year. Um, so they will frequently join the advisory group, lead them through lessons, provide mentorship, walk them through the scheduling process for the first time when they pick their classes for sophomore year, all sorts of things like that. And they truly serve as a support system um, for those students in that advisory. Uh, let's see. And so with the link through the main, the main goal again is to support um, and provide that guidance and mentorship. So it's a, it's a really strong way for them to build a relationship with a student that's an upperclassman that has been through a lot of the things that they're going to experience um, and be able to talk to somebody beyond just a teacher um, that can provide guidance but have a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. All right, now I get to turn it over to Mr. Sims and Mr. Crown. Good evening, I'm Mr. Sims, the athletic director. Can I have everybody stand up, please? All right, you can have a seat. It's been about 30 minutes, just wanted to get your blood flowing a little bit. Gotcha. Um, the good news, we're almost done. So again, I am Jamie Sims, the athletic director. I want to talk about a couple of things related to athletics um, and activities activities and some expectations. One, we're super happy to have you and your um, incoming freshmen here this year. Two, we also know and understand that athletics and activities can be the gateway for your kids to truly feel connected and a sense of belonging here at a high school, especially in a big high school like Middleton. Three, we do have high expectations for your students, um, especially when they're involved in athletics as well because we know that they're giving up the right to be average and they're doing a lot of extra work and practice and competitions. So, let's start talking about what that looks like for us. We know we offer lots of different um, activities and athletics, and Brad's going to talk a little bit about the activities portion. But when it comes to expectations, we take a lot of pride in making sure that we show up and we support our Cardinal athletic programs when we have competitions. But we also make sure that we do that the right way. So starting this year, especially because our first fall sports are um, football, and girls tennis and boys soccer and what else? Volleyball. Boys and girls volleyball. Boys and girls volleyball. Girls golf. Lots of great cross country. Uh, cheer and dance. Women die. Women die. With all of those great sports that we offer, we want to make sure that we're showing up and we're supporting our programs the right way, the cardinal way. So making sure that we're focusing on our teams and our players, not the opponents. The thing that we hate most is when we go somewhere else and we see student sections making fun of our teams and we do not like that. So we want to make sure that we model the expectation that we have for others by making sure that when we show up, we're here for the Cardinals and the Cardinals alone. Sweet. So let's get right into the thing everyone's waiting for. Homecoming 2023. We don't have a theme yet. We're working on it. But it is at the end of the month. If the dance will be uh, September 30th. and Ninth graders, homecoming week is Miss Shoemaker's favorite week of the year. So you gotta do it up. We've got theme days 
We've got Spirit Night with the ninth grade picnic where you get all sorts of free food from your advisors. It's great. We do um, the Cardinal Bowl, or what used to be known as Powder Puff. Um, we do fireworks. Um, only once this year, I promise. Um, and then we're also dedicating the stadium at the homecoming game, and we're honoring our students who are part of homecoming court. And then the dance will be here in the field house and the varsity gym on the 30th. This is the most attended week of events we have all year. Last year, 1,800 students out of our 2,400 attended the homecoming dance. So parents, you can imagine how bad the field house smelled that night. <laughs> but um, the dance is 7 to 10. You may want to put it on your calendar now. We do end it a little early um, just so kids can get home safe. That's something we shifted to last year, which worked really well. Um, but we love homecoming, and we want every ninth grader involved. The parade, the spirit night, the dress-up days, it's going to be a blast. Um, so ninth graders, you'll get more information about that as you start school. The homecoming committee literally starts meeting next week, so hopefully we have a theme soon. Um, but we're looking forward to having you celebrate your first MHS homecoming with us. Um, I'll just step here. Club and Activities Fair. Remember we talked about ASR. The first ASR will be on September 11th, right? Ms. Merrick, I think I'm correct. I'm not right. I'm not right. I thought I was right. But it's going to be the club fair during that ASR. So the ninth graders will get to come down and witness what all of our great clubs and activities do in our school. With all of our theater productions coming in this year, we will eclipse 80 different offerings for our activities and clubs. There is a place for every student in our building. By the way, if you're interested in theater, their tryouts start for the musical next week, so check the website. Um, but we do offer a lot, and so this will be during your ASR period. It'll be the first ASR period where all ninth graders are allowed to come down to the field house and the varsity gym and learn about our activities from our students. Our activities are ran by students and guided by adults. That's the goal, and we have some great ones. Um, so if you think uh, we don't have it, we probably do. Um, and if you're looking at starting something, you just come talk to me and we'll figure out a way to make it happen. So there's that. Oh, anything else on athletics? We're good. See you at games. See you at events. Thank you. I thought you were teaching them the school song. Oh, I guess not. All right. Um, just um, wrapping up here. Um, again, just coming from um, a mother who has a 36-year-old now. I told you I was old. Um, just this is the best of times and can be the worst of times. And we want it, we strive to have it be the best of times. And one of the things that helps with making it the best of times is to be involved in something. And we actually measure that data point. We actually measure how many students we have that are involved. And when we have students struggling, we always will ask at a team meeting, what are they, are they involved in something? Do they have a passion about something? And trying to get them to do that because sometimes the, the after school activities and such are the best part of their day. We hope not, but sometimes that's the case. And so um, anything that you can do to you know, understand what our clubs and activities do and then get them involved um, uh, would be a fantastic kind of entry point. I suspect your kiddos are going to come home really tired there's a lot of sitting in the you know, first days as they're getting oriented, and there's a lot of stress and anxiety about getting around the building. Everybody feels it, though. I want you to know that. Like, even our juniors, our seniors, who've never been in a part of the building, um, get kind of nervous about it. So we are all out in hallways. Staff members are out, out in hallways. They can ask any adult, and we will get you where you need to go. And we don't even count tardies to begin with. So there's no pressure, no stress around that. Um, I shared a little bit about, um, or that I wanted to share with you, our school-wide goal. And this year, um, 
we are uh, really focusing around um, in our in our goal our social emotional learning and so our teachers will actually spend four days for the first professional development days that they will spend learning strategies to engage in the classroom um, and to engage students in the classroom as well as to develop a culture of belonging within the classroom and again we will measure that um, but that really is a focus point um, as we are still coming out of the pandemic um, i recently read research um, that you know many kids have been in you know went through three years of kind of living in a chronic stress situation and that that really that hurts kids and um, and so we we really feel that this social emotional goal is timed really really perfectly for our students I want to introduce you <clears throat> to kind of round out our team here um, but we have two uh, student services coordinators and they actually work with all of our special ed students so if Nikki and Becky would please stand and give a wave we will have We also have a nursing team. We actually have three people in our health department, um, two registered nurses, and um, you know all of the rules about medications and um, you know those kinds of things, and you'll be getting more information from our amazing uh, health team. And then also wanted to point out, we do have a school resource officer, uh, Ms. Kim Wood, and then a student and family advocate, our bilingual student and family advocate is actually here today. So if you want to stand, Laura. Um, also, if you want to um, have your kiddos be able to pull money out of their account, not your account, their account, um, we do have um, a high school um, credit union branch here. If you have an account, you know, you can cash a check or, um, I don't know, you know, get uh, pull money out of your account, that sort of thing. So we do have, um, we're really excited to have um, UW Credit Union be on our campus with ours um, during lunch uh, lunchtime that kids can just stop. All right, again, these are the biggies. First day of school, first freshman is August 31st. <coughs> September 13th is another big day. That is a day where you will actually get to run your student's schedule. So you will get to meet the teach their teachers. You will find out going here, going there, going here, going there, and you're going to have a lot of empathy for them. Um, <laughs> it'd be great if you want to bring your student because they can sort of help you navigate, but we, our link crew leaders will also be here on that evening and be directing families. But it is kind of a, a fun evening. Um, you're only in a class about 10 minutes, but again, you can put a face with the teacher and um, just be able to connect with people, including your, your student's advisor. And then um, Mr. Crandall already mentioned homecoming week, um, the parade, spirit night, football game, dance. It's, it's a fun event. And um, that is that. I, I want to go forward here for just a minute. And again, talk about the partnership that we really, really hope to have. And at this time, I would like any new ninth graders to stand. <laughs> These students are our future, and I know you as families have been investing in them 
we also will be investing in them, and we take that job really, really seriously. So, um, just wanting to mention that there's a couple of different spaces that you can be. Um, you can, um, in the black box, which is right over here, um, the principals and dean of students, so if you want to come in, the South Commons, um, uh, is athletics and activities, if you want to talk to Mr. Crandall or Mr. Sims. And then in the concourse, uh, how do I tell them where that is? Oh, there's signage out there. Um, um, is our special ed uh, team. So again, welcome to Milton High School students and families. Thank you so much for your attention.